Yeah, welcome back to Yay Math videos, yaymath.org, at the YouTube recording space in Playa Vista, California. Um, I'm Robert Adut, and today we are going to be talking about determinants, which is a sub subject of matrices, okay? I really like that word, determinant. It's sort of like determine what you want to do in your life and determined, determined to be resourceful and have grit and be perseverant through all the stuff. So let's calculate the determinant and the perseverance of the following matrices, starting with the two by two. So let's just give you some, give you a random matrix. Let's go with like five, two, one, eight. You notice I did it in that order for a reason. Two by two matrix, the determinant of that is pretty straightforward. This is all you do, all right? You multiply these two, and then you subtract multiplying these two, going patriotic again, all right? So that's all it is. That's 10, it's 5 times 2, minus 8 equals 2. So the determinant of this 2 by 2 matrix is 2. You'll notice I haven't defined what the determinant is. Um, it's not really important we understand what it is right now because it actually serves as a way to solve higher level problems later on. All right, so it's sort of a tool in order to help us solve matrices in the future. Let's try a determinant of a 3 by 3, all right? Okay, let's go with 1, 2, 3, negative uh, 6, negative 4, uh, 4, and then 5, 0, and uh, 2 again. All right, so there's a couple ways to solve a determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. Um, one of them is called expansion by minors, and I'll explain what that means. It sounds funny. That's like when people that are under 18 make something large. <laughs> the world population is expanding by minors. So this is how it works. Basically, you pick any row or any column, okay? And what happens is, like, let's say if I wanted to pick the first row, all right? What I would do is that one after the other, let's say one and then two, and then three, I would multiply, let's go a little more space there, take off some space. I could pick any row or any column again, but let's start with one, two, and three, and I multiply each of those by a two by two matrix. Um, the two by two matrix that we need to get is actually relative to the one and two and three. So if I start with one as my target, it sounds kind of weird, so just try to follow every step one at a time and maybe pause the video for a sec if it helps, just to let it marinate. So if I pick the number one here, I eliminate its column and eliminate its row, and I'm left with this two by two matrix. So I'm gonna put this two by two matrix here next to the one. So that's negative four, four, zero, two, all right? And then I'm gonna do the same thing with the number two. So as carefully as possible, I am determined <laughs> to get rid of all the stuff I need. I do amuse myself, all right? It actually helps to do this with paper. If you have pen, I would write the matrix down in pen and then do this stuff in pencil so then you can erase the stuff and you won't actually disrupt the matrix itself. So let's go ahead and take the two, all right? Take off the one and eliminate this and this. And the resulting two by two matrix is everything left over. Negative six, four over here, five and two. All right, and then we're gonna do that with eliminating the stuff from the three slot over here on the right. I'm gonna just reinsert some data. One, two, three. This is negative, negative, that's right. This is zero. All right, so we'll take the three off, three on there, eliminate this row and this column, and the resulting matrix is negative six, negative four, uh, five, zero. 
By now, hopefully you can guess that this is not my favorite method. And I actually, if you're a teacher watching this, just a quick shout out to you. Thank you for being with us. I'm honored to be uh, on your team and to be your colleague in this racket we call education, right? We're doing it all for the students and that's the end result of what we're doing. Um, a message to the teachers, please don't, I suggest, uh, promote students to do certain problems in specific ways. I think there are multiple ways to the mountaintop and that if there's another way to do, let's say, a determinant of a three by three, which I'm about to introduce next, uh, that we don't necessarily need to test on specific ways to solve the problem. If a student feels comfortable in his or her own way, then I say leave that be because they found their own way to solve the problem. Just like if someone has a way to be successful in business, that's their prescription. That's the way that they want to be successful in business or in a relationship or whatever it is, like even at school, they, they have their own system. So this is just one method that works for a lot of students and for some students it doesn't. So here is me saying we don't have to test on methods. We have to test on results. That's what I think. So, okay, yeah, and one of the reasons it's not my favorite method is that it's not done, okay? Here, these are two by two matrices. We're about to get the determinants of them, but what we need to do first is put a little key here and recognize that each of these numbers should either get a positive or negative coefficient out in front, all right? And so the way that works is you go plus, minus, plus. This is the same for all three by three matrices. Minus, plus, minus, plus, minus, plus. All right, you'll notice this little diamond of negatives here, all right? <laughs> sounds awful, sounds like a horror flick. The diamond of negatives, they're coming after you. So basically any number that is in these slots would be negative. In this case, it's our two, so that becomes negative here. Had the two been negative, we would have changed the sign, in other words. So these mean change the sign of whatever number is in that spot. The one remains positive, and the three remains positive. And now we're doing matrix, uh, determinants of two by twos now. These are the minor matrices of two by twos. All right, here we go. One times, this is negative eight plus zero. Negative eight plus zero, multiplying those. And that's negative eight plus one is negative, or times one is that. Um, let's go over here. This is negative 12 minus 20, right? It's always minus. So negative 12 minus 20. So it's negative two times negative 12 minus 20. All right. And then over here, three times zero minus negative 20. Zero minus negative 20. Because that's five times negative four. All right. So zero minus negative 20. All right, let's see what comes a knocking. Negative eight, and then negative two times. This is negative 32, and this is plus three times. Zero plus 20 is 20. All right, easel E, stay with it, stay cracking. Not literally, stay popping. I mean, stay intact. This is a negative two times negative 32 is positive 64, and then you have plus 60. All right, so uh, negative eight and 64 makes 56 plus 60. 56 plus 60 is 116, is the determinant of this three by three matrix. That's method one, it's called expansion by minors. Method two, for a three by three determinant is called using the diagonals. This is my preferred method, I like it, and you'll see why, you'll see why. It's definitely less intensive and just a little more multipl multiplication oriented. So all you do first is you recreate these two columns right over here, one, negative six, five, two, negative four, zero. Who comes up with this? I don't know. It's incredible that someone figured out how to do this. I'm, I'm in shock. I'm totally enamored and in awe of that. 
So after we create these two additional columns, we multiply by diagonals. Let's do that in red. So we're going to go down the first three diagonals, just like we did in the two by two matrix. Now we're doing with these, all right? Then these go, the two, four, and the five, and then these multiply. Okay, we're going to multiply all three of those. So let's do that. One times negative four times two is negative eight. We'll put that in. Negative eight. Plus two times four times five, that's eight times five is 40. Plus three times negative six times zero, boom, love when that happens, zero. All right? Minus, remember, just like we did in the two by two matrix, we subtract the other uh, diagonals multiplied. So let's do that here in green. That's these three. I'll point them out when we're doing them. There you go. And these. Oh, we don't get any zeros. Bummer. All right, here we go. Five times negative four times three. That's negative 20 times three is negative 60. So we put that number here, right? See, we're putting all three of those results here just like all three of those results here and subtracting the two sets of results from each other. All right, so that's the first green one. Oh, we do have a zero, nice. Zero times four times one is zero. And then you have two times negative six times two. So these two multiply it as four, four times negative six is negative 24. All right, I hope we get the same thing as last time, I don't know. So negative 8 plus 40 is negative 32, or positive 32, that is, minus. All right, this is negative 84, all right? Stay with it. And this becomes 32 plus 84, because you'll see double negative there. 32 plus 84 is 116. <laughs> All right, to be completely honest, I'm relieved. <laughs> we got the same thing, because at any point, we could have gotten something wrong. I could have gotten something wrong, and it's happened before. So uh, still, I'm not deterred. <laughs> Next, I'm going to show you something really interesting. That laugh was way too intense for the moment. All right, what's interesting about a 3 by 3 determinant is that it actually can give you the area of a triangle. Check this out. It's amazing. Come up with three random points, any three random points, just like we've been graphing in the past. Let's say 0, 3, uh, 1, negative 4, and uh, 6, 2. Using determinants, you can get the area of the triangle formed by these three points. I just made it up randomly. If you just want to get a quick visual on what it would look like, look something like this, 0, 3, 1, 2, 3, there. 1, negative 4, 1, negative 1, 2, 3, 4 there. And then 6, 2, holla, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2. See this random triangle? You don't have to know anything about it except three points. You could calculate the area using determinants of a 3 by 3. Here's the formula. It's pretty fascinating. The area of this triangle equals Put down each of the points, 0, 3, 1, negative 4, 6, 2, okay? Simply just add 1's here. Isn't that crazy? Who thought of that? I just like spittled it. <laughs> 1, 1, 1 over here. You get the determinant of this 3 by 3. Multiply it <clears throat> by 1 half, and that is the area of your triangle which is totally crazy fascinating, all right? In order to do that, we would expand by putting our two additional columns. I'm actually not going to do it. One, zero, six, three, negative four, two, right? I'm just going to remind how to do it, and then you can do that um, yourselves. Okay. Multiply these, multiply these three, right? and then the next three rows, one, one, and two, right? And then you subtract by multiplying these diagonals going bottom left to up right. Multiply that result by one half, and you get the area of the triangle, 
All right. Another thing I really like about the way I'm uh, offering it is that in the books they just use these points as like A, B, C, D. I don't like saying that. I just saying the three points. Here are the three points. Put them in. Add a column of ones. Add one half. Get the three by three determinant. Multiply it by a half, and you get the area of the triangle. It's pretty special. All right. I hope that helped you. I hope you're determined to do this well. Pun intended. Thank you. Yay math. See you next time. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.